Hi, and welcome to Riddles in the Dark, where I endeavor to learn and explain the rules of the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game by Free League Publishing. Making Rolls Role-playing games are known for using what affectionately called math rocks to provide the players with the element of randomness to outcomes. No role-playing game would be complete without it, and the One Ring RPG is no different. Where the One Ring RPG is different, as compared to other role-playing games, are the type and amount of dice used, the special rules applied to them, and how they are interpreted and results added. Most everyone who's been introduced to role-playing games will be familiar with the D20 system. Dungeons & Dragons made it famous. D6, West End Games comes to mind, or some other combination of multi-phase dice. Looking at you, DCC. The One Ring uses a combination of 6-sided and 12-sided dice, most commonly called D6 and D12, to provide the random elements of the game. In the One Ring RPG, they are called as follows. D6s are called success dice, numbered 1 to 6 with a small rune on the 6th side called the Tangwar. D12s are called feet dice, numbered 1 through 10 with a Gandalf and an Eye of Sauron finishing off the 12 sides. Note, if you're using regular dice, the 6 would signify a Tangwar was rolled on a D6. If you're using a regular D12, an 11 matches the Eye of Sauron and a 12 matches the Gandalf rune. Like all role-playing games and other tabletop games, when an event or action requires some form of resolution or result, it is up to the lore master to decide if and when a player needs to roll to decide an outcome. Generally, players roll an appropriate skill, combat proficiency, or other action that suits the narrative. The following is what players generally would roll feet and success dice for. When the scene presents the opportunity for the players to use one of their listed skills on their character sheet, if the players are in combat and need to make an attack against an adversary, or make a protection roll to prevent a wound, or use a combat task, if players are presented to make what's called shadow tests, they would make rolls based on their valor or wisdom scores. Note, all of these will be explained in depth in later videos. Once the lore master advises what the players must roll, the process goes as follows. First, identify which is to be rolled for. In this example, we will roll for Riddle. Second, the player will look at their player hero's Riddle skill and see how skillful they are in that particular ability. In this case, Falco Hornblower has two diamonds, pips, marks out of six. This translates into two success dice to be used when making the skill roll. Thirdly, when making a skill roll, or any other roll as mentioned earlier, a player or low master for ad adversaries will roll a feat die plus the number of success die as per the player hill's skill level. Note, there are circumstances where this can be different and we'll touch that on in a later video. If a skill or ability has no success dice to be rolled, then one would only roll the feat die. 4. After rolling the appropriate feat die and number of success die, the player, hero, or lore master adds the numerical total. This numerical total is then compared to the target number as listed in the appropriate location of the character sheet as seen here. Note, target numbers or TN will be described in another video as well. If the resulting number is equal to or higher than the TN number identified, the player, hero, adversary has succeeded in what they wanted to do. If the resulting number is lower than the TN number identified, the player, hero, or adversary has failed in their task or action. As another element of randomness, the One Ring RPG adds in degrees of success or failure. Not all successes or failures are the same, and certain results produce extraordinary outcomes, whether positive or negative. If a player hero rolls a Gandalf rune, it is considered an automatic success regardless of the total number achieved. If on a successful roll, or multiple Tangwars are rolled, then the outcome is of a superior quality. As an example, a musician performs particularly well, a lookout spots the enemy on a longer distance away, or some other thing that's out of the ordinary. Here's the breakdown of the degrees of success. 
if no tang wires. The result was a success, but it didn't achieve anything beyond the bare minimum. If a single tang wire was rolled on the success, the player hero accomplished something out of the ordinary, what's commonly called a great success. If two or more tang wires are rolled on the success, the result was absolutely exceptional and memorable, an extraordinary success. In these instances, the player should describe what it was that their character did to match the success. On special successes, usually for skills only, a player can opt to spend the Tangwars rolled to trigger a number of special results for each of the Tangwars rolled. Looking on page 19 of the core rulebook, you'll see a skills special success table, as seen here. You can spend one Tangwar icon to A, cancel a failure, score one additional success, gain insight, go quietly, make haste, or widen influence. Note, if your roll scores multiple Tangwars, they are normally used to achieve the multiple special results, such as assisting a fellow player hero and doing so silently as an example. There are special triggers during combat when Tangwars are rolled on a successful attack, and we'll cover that during a later video. If a player rolls an Eye of Sauron on the feet dice, this represents not an automatic failure, but counts as a zero when adding up the die roll result in assessing failure or success. It sure definitely helps or hinders the ability of the player hero to succeed, however. There's more to rolling an Eye of Sauron, but again we'll touch on that in a later video regarding eye awareness. On repeating rolls, generally rolls are not to be repeated unless it's deemed by the lore master that they can do the task with another skill. This doesn't apply to combat actions or tasks. The player hero still has to deal with the consequences of the first failure, however, as described on page 130 on consequences of failures. This ends this video on making rolls in the One Ring RPG. As mentioned already, we'll be looking at more circumstances that impact how and what you roll in later videos, and other elements of the rules to play the One Ring RPG. If you like this video and others that I've created so far, please like, comment, and subscribe, as I hope to be putting out more of these videos to help new players and lore masters, like myself, learn about the One Ring RPG and build more of a following. Thank you for watching, and hope to see you back soon.